Chair, I rise tonight to fight for America's kids and grandkids. That's what we're here to do. This fiscal year, 2019 Financial Services and Government uh, General Government Appropriations Bill, as I'll explain in a moment, reflects the public outcry over deficit spending and addresses those concerns on behalf of America's kids and grandkids. But before I dive into those details, I want to thank uh, Ranking Member Quigley for his hard work and dedication for our work together as, uh, as we have uh, uh, shepherded this committee and, uh, through the process in this bill. But I want to mention a few of the bill's highlights. Now, this bill is a product of a very member-driven process. We brought appropriators and authorizers together. We consulted other committees. We fostered personal member-to-member -member conversations to make sure that priorities in this bill were vetted and supported across jurisdictions. We held several public hearings and reviewed over 2,100 unique member requests as we put this bill together. And as the bill passed out of this Appropriations Committee, it passed with bipartisan support. What more can you do on behalf of America's kids and grandkids? As in past years, we aim to provide the oversight and allocate taxpayer dollars with the greatest of care. But this bill includes resources to implement the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, which cuts taxes for families and businesses all across our country, spurring economic growth. The funding in our bill will help implement the law very quickly so American families can use the system without disruption whatsoever. In addition, this bill prioritizes law enforcement, homeland security, and cybersecurity. For example, it provides record funding for the high-intensity drug trafficking areas and drug-free community programs. And it updates the legacy IT systems that are government-wide, we've all seen it, we've heard about it, through the Technology Modernization Fund. Similar to our landmark approach last year, this bill also includes major financial reforms. It cuts regulations, streamlines agency processes. In fact, this bill includes more than 20 pieces of legislation that have passed through this body with bipartisan support, in most cases with more than 270 votes. Now, importantly, one of these reforms brings transparency and oversight to an agency we've all talked about, and that's to the Bureau of Consumer Financial Protection by bringing it under the authority of Congress and underneath the authority of the Appropriations Committee. Now, with these kind of reforms, this bill has earned a lot of support across our country. Uh, from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the Investment Company Institute, the American Bankers Association, Independent Community Bankers of America, National Association of Federally Insured Credit Unions, and Credit Union uh, National Association, in addition to the Na National Taxpayer Union and Citizens for Responsible Budgeting. This bill is bringing together a lot of, a lot of different interests all across our country. But in closing, Madam Chair, I'd like to highlight really what the heart of this bill is, the major feature of this bill. If your district is anything like mine, you know the American people are frustrated. They're frustrated with Congress and they're frustrated with this out of control spending. They see our annual deficit fuel our dangerous national debt. So it's time to try something different and that's what we've done. Because if we don't, we'll stay stuck in this fiscal death spiral that we're in. Now after a lot of thought and effort, we came up with a very creative way to protect funding from being spent. The appropriations process does not make saving money easy, not at all. We all know that if a subcommittee such as mine doesn't spend everything, another subcommittee will come in and scoop it up and spend it somewhere else. This is just the way legislating is, is, is in Washington. So we came up with something different, and we created a new fund in this bill called the Fund for America's Kids and Grandkids, which safeguards funds for America's uh, future generations. In fact, it's like a savings account. We put $585 million from this bill as an initial deposit into the savings account. And this, this money is protected. It cannot be spent until Treasury indicates that we have balanced our budget or we have a surplus. Now this deposit's only two and a half percent. It's two and a half percent of what, uh, what we were allocated. That's two and a half pennies of every dollar that we spend. But this is a great step forward. And it's on behalf of America's kids and grandkids. This approach causes us to think about what deficit spending truly means and in whose name we are borrowing the money and who ultimately is going to get stuck with this debt. Establishing the fund for America's kids and grandkids means we're appropriating with a new spirit here in Washington, D.C. And that is, just because you can spend it doesn't mean you have to. And with that, Madam Chair, I'll yield back.